One of the challenges I run into teaching guitar is to try to get my students to know where all the notes are on the fretboard. And that's just like, it just takes a while to learn, like, it probably took me like three years of playing guitar to really feel comfortable being able to know where all the notes are on the fretboard. And like, one of the main ways to do it is to learn to read notes. Like, when you're actually reading notes, not tab, it forces your brain to um, have to think in terms of notes. And then when you're like sight reading notes, especially in the middle of the guitar, it really forces your brain to know where the notes are. So that's mainly what helped me. And even now, like, I'm still, like, my brain, it's not always instant. Like, I know, I know this is G, C, like this, like F, like, I, like, my brain had to do, like, a tiny bit of a adjustment. But one of the things that, um, one of the things that really helped me was to start learning octaves, like, like, just to feel comfortable, like, I just played G. Then no matter where you are, like if you're on G, then you can find the G's, and then eventually you just start to sort of know where they're at. So I, I used to try to like communicate that concept to my students, and then I remember I came across this book. Um, it was a really cheesy book, but it had great info in it, and they had this concept called the Big W to explain how to find. Um, how to think about the octaves on the guitar. So I'm just going to share that right now because I've done it with my students and it works really well. So I'm going to do it with a note E. So I'm going to just demonstrate it and then I'll explain how to do it and I'll do it with one more note. So. So I'll do it one more time. I just found all the E's on the guitar. So here's what you gotta think. It's kind of like a series of rules. So whenever you're on the top string, then you go straight down to the bottom string. So this note's E, then you go drop all the way down to the bottom string. So we're on the top. So when you hit the top string, the pattern is to go down to the bottom string because these two strings are the same. So and then. From here, you go over two, up two. So over two from here, one, two, up two, one, two. So, so far we had like the drop, over two, up two. Then you go over two, up two again, except when we hit the B string, you have to go one to the right. So anytime you cross the B string, you have to add one to it. So over two, up two, but we hit the B string, so you gotta go one to the right. So we got the drop from the top, over two, up two, over two, up two, but we hit the B string, so you gotta go one to the right. So make sure you can do that first. And over two, up two is a really good rule for octaves. And the rule when you hit the B string or cross it, you gotta go one to the right is a good rule for understanding how the guitar works. So one more time, we're on the top string, E, and you go down to the bottom, E. Over two, up two, over two, up two, but we hit the B string, so it goes to the fifth fret. And this is the one that throws people off. When you're on the B string, you just gotta memorize this. Take your ring finger and put it on the A string, two frets over. This is an octave shape that just stumps people because people don't think about it that often. So when you hit the B string, the next octave, because we can't go over two, up two, we don't have another string. We're gonna drop down an octave, it's like that. One way everyone's seen this octave shape is when you play a C chord, the outer two notes are both C. So this is a useful octave to know. So, so, so far we start up on top, E, drop down to the bottom, E over two, up two, over two, up two, but we hit the B string, and you drop down to the A string with your ring finger, so the 5th fret here, 7th fret here, and then we're here now, and then go over 2, up 2, over 2, up 2, except we cross the B string, so instead of 11th fret, we go to 12th fret. 
Then you drop all the way down, because we're up on the top again, the top string, just like we were down here. Over two, up two. Over two, up two. But we hit the B string, so you got to go one extra. And then you go down to the A string, because we hit the B string. So I said this is called a big W, and that might not make any sense, but if you visualize this shape that, w that we just made, it goes like that, and then it goes up, and then it goes, whoops, it goes down, so imagine a W here. Down, up, down like that, and then up. It kind of makes like a W shape. It's kind of, it's kind of stupid. The book is really cheesy, but if you were to draw this out, here's like this one side of the W, and then it goes up. Here's like the midpoint, down, and then up. So it's kind of like a crooked W. It's like huge middle section. But really, like the series of rules is what's more important. Like you can think about like a W, or you can just remember those rules. So I'll do it again. Zero. You drop all the way down from the top to zero. Over two, up two. Over two, up two. But we hit the B string, so you gotta go one more. It's the fifth fret. Then when you hit the B string, you gotta use your ring finger to get down to the next octave. And then you go over two, up two from there. Over two, up two, but we cross the B string. So you gotta go over three. And you drop down, and you just keep going. Over two, up two. Over two, up two, but we cross the B string. We hit the B string. Then we're on the B string, so you get onto the A string. So it probably sounds confusing. I might do another video and like draw it on paper. I have this app where I can do that. That might be clear. But um, let me do let me do it with another note. So why don't we do it with F actually? So we start on F right here. And then you drop all the way down. Then you go over two up two. Over two up two, but we hit the B string. So it slides over one. Then we're on the B string, so you drop down to the A string. Over two, up two. Over two, up two, but we hit the, cross the B string. And then we're up there, so you go all the way down. Over two, up two. Over two, up two, but we hit the B string. And then you can actually get one more from the B to the A string. So it'd be like this. One, one, three, six, eight, ten, thirteen. 13, um, 15, 18, 20. You can use your ear too, because like let's say you make a mistake. Oh, you forgot to go over one more because you hit the B string. Then let's say you went, oops. It's really good, actually, also, just to be able to start trusting your ear and be like... Like, just to be able to do stuff like that. So, I don't know, maybe this lesson was a, was a dud. <laughs> I don't know. Because this is a really good concept, and I've been able to communicate to my students in person. But I can, like, grab their fingers and point, touch the guitar. Um... So I don't know, if it's confusing, like, leave, leave me a comment, and maybe I can do that other type of video. Because it's a really important concept, because it's really powerful once you know how to find octaves. And this is one of the powers of it. Let's say you had a little riff that went... Whoops. Let's say you wanted to move that riff around all over the guitar. You can either just use your ear... So you see, I'm just kind of hacking around until I find it. That works if you have a good ear and you're used to doing that. A lot of people, it takes a while till you get to that stage. And one thing that can help is to know actually what the notes are. So this note, um, you could easily figure out what it is. It's 10th fret. If you go to the 12th fret and you know your string numbers, the 12th fret is E, B, G, D, A, E, E, B, G, D, A, E, so here's B, the B string, and then a whole step down from B is A, so we're on A, so we got 10, 8, 9, 8, and if you think about 
if you think about um, just what one of the notes are from the riff, you don't even know to, need to know all three, but this is A. Actually, you don't even need to know the notes. I don't know why I was just explaining the notes. You don't really need to know. Really, what works fine is just to use those octave tricks. So you got to pick one of the notes. Let's say this one. You can actually pick any from the riff, but you might as well start with the first note. So then we're like, all right, how can we shift this around? Well, we need to use those octave tricks. So the first one, if you're on the B string, you could go down to here. So we could start there instead. Notice something weird happened, like the, the shape changed. See there, it was in the middle, that bottom note. That's because we hit the B string, so what would happen is when we move this pattern up, if we move that up, um, these notes slide, these notes, think about this for a second, these notes would slide over here. When we hit the B string, those two notes would slide over, so you'd get like that shape. So that's a little bit confusing, but... The other direction you could go would be over over three and down two. And then you could do it like this. Oops, sorry. Over three. <laughs> over three, down two. The same thing is going to happen because we got down from the B string. So, so far I got... I should have given an easier example because this is kind of getting hard to explain. Let's just say the riff was this. So I, then that would be easier. So this is the note I'm trying to move around. I'm just going to move the first note. So I need to find the octave of this. So I could first thing I could do is go down from the B to the A string. I could go over two, up two. Over two, up two, but cross, so... I could go back to where I started. I could go over three, down two. I could go over two, down two. Or you could go up to the top. Or over, down three, over two. But one thing that can really pay off, because that might have been like a total headache, what I just did. So one thing that can make things a lot easier is to actually think about what this note is. This is A. So then you could find A somewhere else. Like here's A. And then you can start using some of your octave tricks from a spot that's maybe more comfortable. Like say so dropped all the way down. Over two up two. Over three up two. Down to the from the B to the A string. So basically, instead of just finding single notes, you can transpose riffs around. Like, not transpose, but move them around, shift the octave. So, I mean, it's pretty useful, because, like, a lot of times you're jamming with someone, and they're, like, they're playing some chords. make up something because you're just a lot of times that when you jam with people it's good to just copy what they're doing so like sometimes I'll just play the same chords like and you could be like and you're like all right I need to get out of their space so you could just be like all right here's my first note so over three up over two up two where we hit across the B string so and then you could be like oh I don't really want to be right there so maybe down to you could quickly go through and then you can start moving around <laughs> so this lesson got a little bit vague as I kept talking but it's kind of one of the ways you can use it but it's a little bit different than how I just described it it's kind of like you should be able to find the single notes and then it's like that knowledge will sit in your brain and make it easier to to use other types of knowledge too like it's like a useful skill, but it's more like it's not going to come out exactly like I just did it. Like when you actually start to use it in practice. So anyways, I just figured I'd throw it out there. 
it might be totally confusing, but it could be good to see it. So.